Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending June 11th, 2016. First up, this is from my friend Sue. This is from FastCompany.com. Can this capsule help survive a tsunami? Aerospace engineers have built a reinforced pod that they believe will protect inhabitants from, a, from the biggest storms in the world. They've already produced a two-man capsule and they cost less than the price of a car, so not a bad investment if you live in a place like Japan or any other place that's going to have uh, tsunamis or things like that and there might be a chance you're trapped and don't have a chance to escape and they're actually um, right now looking for some uh, funding to up it to the next level to where they'll have 10 person capsules I guess these things can withstand about a 75 mile per hour impact and they do some demonstrations too they said they noticed all kinds of uh, um, in the floating debris, there was all kinds of rebar and stuff like that that you could possibly crash into. So they actually dropped this thing under rebar to make sure the aluminum shell can withstand the impact. If for some reason you do end up being totally submerged, they have a 60-minute air tank that you can use to. Uh, but chances are you're going to be floating up above the regular uh, debris and stuff like that so that there are vents and things like that so you can get some kind of an air. But... Um, I think a very good idea if you were to put like five or six of these on top of an apartment building and people were not able to escape, or at least some people were not able to escape, you could probably with these ten man things with six of them you could get rid of, you could uh, um, rescue, end up rescuing about sixty people total. So that'll work out pretty good. So if you get a chance, check that out. As usual, all links will be down below. This next one is from my friend John B from Reuters Tire Makers Race to Turn Dandelions into Rubber. And uh, Dutch biologist Ingrid Vandermeer, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, often meets with disbelief when she talks about her work on dandelions and how it could secure the future of road transport. The reaction is understandable given most people regard the yellow flowers as pesky intruders. This is not a, uh, I think this is a, a, a dandelion native to Kazakhstan, so it's not quite like the dandelions, at least exactly like the dandelions out in your front yard if you live in the U.S. Midwest, but they say about this early signs are good. A small scale, scale trial by U.S. research team found the dandelions delivered per hectare rubber yields on a par with the best rubber tree plant plantations, I can almost talk, in tropical Asia. So within a decade, rather than being a backyard vein like weed cousins, like the wild weed cousins, the new flowers might be seen in neat rows on uh, places across Europe and the United States where they can grow even in poor soil. Always nice to use a weedy type of thing that doesn't need rich soil to uh, produce something and especially to get a soft uh, petroleum kick with the rubber. And this next one is from my friend Navy Thomas A. Tom. Fox News Science Feds reportedly set to approve first private space mission. I've also got another follow-up to this too about Mars but this right here is a uh, private space mission which they hope will actually uh, end up going to the moon so uh, the government's endorsement could eliminate the largest regulatory hurdle to plans by Moon Express a relatively obscure space startup to land a roughly 20 pound package of scientific hardware on the moon sometime next year it also would provide the biggest federal boost yet for unmanned commercial space exploration and potentially the first in an array of nonprofit ventures throughout the solar system for I should say for profit, not non profit. Um, so it's nice that they're clearing the hurdles for uh, private space transport. And an article relating that too was uh, from the Washington Post. Elon Musk provides new tale details on his mind blowing mission to Mars. Ever since Elon Musk founded a space startup company 14 years ago, the goal has always been the same establishing a colony on Mars. Now he's finally beginning to reveal how he plans to get there. I'm thinking if possible too maybe they could do a combined mission because NASA certainly although they're coming up with the research and they're on track um, as far as right now doing what they're doing with the future Mars mission there's they're gonna run out of money there just isn't the money there to actually make it take place but if they could combine with some private financing and maybe uh, you know do a little bit of splitting of the uh, learn material and stuff like that with private corporations I think that's the best shot we have in the US at least of uh, getting a Mars colony started up and why not use private funds if, the, if NASA isn't going to do it with public funds why not use private funds if we can to get a Mars colony started I mean we're still talking at best 20 30 years in the future but hey if we're going to do it 20 or 30 years in the future what better place to start than now and last up this is from my friend Bob H 
Three guys swore they could make gills for humans and raised $800,000, and it should be a cautionary tale for everyone. This is basically telling you that, remember, when you invest in Kickstarter, Indiegogo, um, all the different uh, crowdfunding sources and stuff like that, GoFundMe, that you're taking a risk. I don't think at best any of these things ever reaches a success rate of more than about 10%, and in some cases, uh, People think that they may be even total ripoffs. I think more of the story is with some of these, and they're going to give you an example of the underwater breathing gills, and I think I actually did a story maybe in a past TDU report about that. But the problem is it has a lot of uh, dreamers and marketers and uh, entrepreneurs and stuff like that with ideas, but they don't quite have the engineering and the material skill to really go through with it. They can do the marketing. They can do the creative videos and stuff like that. But... Um, Sometimes science just isn't far enough along to be able to do something like an underwater breathing gill that's maybe, you know, the size of, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe about 12 inches or something like that where you can actually take the water and extract the oxygen. I mean, uh, the concept might be there, but engineering and material science just may not catch up with what you're actually trying to do. But if you get a chance, this is from uh, Tech Insider. Um, read this article here and uh, realize when you invest money in stuff, I've probably invested in several uh, Kickstarter and projects like that myself, but I don't think my total in the last five years has even approached $50. And a lot of my investments in some of the things is just like $5 here and there. Like I invested in a, a friend had a, a short film startup and I invested $5 in that and they've got the film finished and they're starting to send out the perks right now. Uh, for my $5, I'll get a, a digital copy of the film, which is, that's what was promised for the uh, investment. But, you know, hey, realize it's it's total risk money i mean you're you're taking that money and you may never actually there's some of the places do refund if uh the project doesn't go through but some of the places when you invest they just give the money direct to the people asking for money so don't risk anything that you can't lose easily and say oh well you know i tried and and easily give it up like that so when you're doing anything like this just realize that you're taking a long shot 90 percent chance of failure 10 percent chance of success that's just the way it goes. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Thank you, everybody, that sent material in this week. It was a really great week for a, a lot of good articles sent in here. Um, if you get a chance, check them out. And uh, take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.